Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. We keep talking about the Tata Steel Chess Tournament played in Vike Anze. This video, we're gonna take a look at the game between the local hero Luke Van Veli and the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Here we got a picture of the two gentlemen. Magnus Carlsen did not have a great start into the tournament. He has one out of three after three rounds lost the game to Wojtaszek and had two very uninspiring draws. Fans of the world champion are a bit worried, especially his play in the openings did not really impress. Luke Van Veli is also at one out of three, got crushed in a Sicilian by Vasily Ivanchuk. But fortunately for him, he is white in today's game and Van Veli with white is a much stronger player than Van Veli with black in a super tournament, in my opinion. He plays d4, is very knowledgeable and solid with the white pieces especially. d4 has been giving Carlsen fits recently. Against Anand, against Giri, against Wojtaszek, he never got any really good positions or positions to his liking. And today he returns to a more normal opening. He does not go d6, g6, which he has been trying earlier in the tournament. He goes knight f6, c4 and g6. Especially the Grunfeld has been a stronghold in the repertoire of the world champion. He also has used the King's Indian occasionally. Van Veli goes knight f3, bishop g7 and g3, the fianchetto, the most solid way to tackle these openings. When once again black faces, not sure if once again, but black does face a choice here how he wants to handle it. He can play d6 leading the game into King's Indian territory. He can play c6 followed by d5 or he can play d5 in one go. The most solid is supposed to be the setup with c6 and d5 prefer, preferred amongst others by Fabiano Carrana. But in this game Carlsen surely wanted to win and wanted to keep it a bit more unbalanced. He tries to move d5. c takes d, knight takes d5, bishop g2. Knight to b6, this might look a bit funny at first sight, but it is the absolute main line. The idea is that this knight gets out of the way, so his colleague can go to c6 and attack the d4 pawn, hopefully forcing a concession from white early on. While if you started with knight c6, there could be problems with e4 followed by d5, both with tempo, which you don't really want to allow. So knight b6, the main line, knight to c3, knight to c6, and here is where it gets interesting. The most often seen move in this position is the move e3, defending the d4 pawn, when after castles, castles, there have been tons of theory battles on a very high level. Black often chooses the very subtle waiting move, rook e8 here, and discussions if white is better or not and why are still being held. Carlsen is familiar with this position because he had a painful loss from the white side actually where he tried the very strange looking move queen to d2 against Anish Giri a while back also in Vikanze. But none of this is going to happen today. Van Veli chooses an interesting little move which I quite like especially psychologically. He goes for castles in this position, not defending the d4 pawn. Now black chose this Clever move order with knight b6, knight c6 to attack the pawn and force a concession. So the logical move and the main move here is to just capture it now that it's being offered. However, after knight takes d4, knight takes, queen takes this is the main move. White has a couple of lines that are very, very solid for him as they often are in forcing lines. Even though he's a pawn down here after knight to b5, queen to c4, queen e5 is also possible. Similar, queen b3. White tends to win his pawn back and at the very least he plays with a draw in hand which is always pleasant if you're facing the world champion. So very possible Carlsen did not want any of that and I should also mention at least for completeness sake that there's a bit of a trend in this position to try to move a4 and play for a win with white here tending to follow up with a5 and surprisingly white has been able to pose some problems so maybe it's just a topical line as well, which you might want to look into if you're interested in this stuff. So Carlsen doesn't want any of it and true to his style he doesn't go for complications early on, but he goes for castles. However, this is a concession and now white is no longer forced to play e3, but he can go for the 
space grabbing d5. All of this is well known, knight to a5 is the main move here, which is played. Knight b4, e4 just doesn't really work for black. Knight e5, I think you take and go bishop h6 also doesn't look very good. So knight a5 is normal and people know that this knight will enter the game quite soon again. So the knight on the rim is not that bad. Still white is better, or at least better as a stretch, a bit more comfortable here. The move queen c2 is very subtle and the move played by Van Veli. Exploiting that black can't really take on d5 because of rook d1. It's not entirely true, you can do that and after rook d1 there is still some theory here. c6, white has to play the subtle knight to e1, but this has been shown to be good for white. In case you're wondering why after e4 there is still knight b4 with a counterattack against the queen. But this 91 stuff is supposed to be a bit better for white, so no one really takes on d5 in this position. Instead, everybody plays c6. When after d takes c, knight takes c6, this knight returns into the game. And the position has settled a little bit. The <coughs> pawn structure is almost symmetrical. Actually, it is symmetrical, not almost symmetrical, it is quite symmetrical. And white is a little bit better because his pieces are more active. Starts with the move rook d1, attacking the queen, forcing a concession. Carlsen chooses bishop d7. Some people have tried bishop f5 to provoke e4 and now bishop d7. But practice has shown that white is a bit better here as well after bishop f4. So Carlsen goes for the immediate bishop d7. Van Veli keeps developing with bishop f4. And Carlsen goes to solve one of his problems, which is this pin goes queen c8, establishing some kind of grip on this diagonal. So white just keeps developing, his pieces are arranged a bit more harmoniously towards the center. It's not so easy to come up with good moves for black here. e5 might look tempting, but it weakens a lot of squares as well. White just goes to e3, this bishop can jump, this knight can... Bishop can't jump, the bishop can advance, the knight can jump. And white is a bit better. Instead, Carlsen chooses to play bishop f5 now. He's provoking e4. <coughs> Excuse me. And his idea is after e4 to go bishop g4. Exploiting this pin. Not only can white no longer go h3 because this queen helps cover the square, but there are also some ideas with bishop takes f3 followed by knight d4 in the air. So he's fighting for the d4 square. Still, it did cost quite some time, and especially the queen on c8 is not all that well placed. So white is better here. And here is where it <coughs> went a little wrong for Luke van Veli. He spent more than 20 minutes on his next move, which I think is already a problem, because he had played slowly up to this point, and if you burn this time early on in the game, you might miss it later. He did have a tempting choice between two knight jumps. Knight to d5 is my favorite and I think would have led to a wide advantage. Threatening even queen takes c6 and then knight e7. Picking up the queen. Whatever black does, he will end up a bit worse. e5, for example, you can just go bishop g5. Black is in some trouble here. <clears throat> Another tempting move was the move knight b5. Less obvious, but has the added benefit of covering the d4 square and is intending to jump into c7, also asking some quite annoying questions. So once again, we have to say that Carlsen did not manage to solve his opening problems. Had Van Veli played either of these moves, he would have had some serious pressure. And even another move, queen to b1, would have been pretty good to vacate this c file and then go knight d5. However, Van Veli chose another option after burning a lot of time. And this move also turns out to be a mistake. Queen b3, once again, he wants to get his queen out of the way, so knight d5 will have even more impact. But here Carlsen shows why he is the world champion, the highest rated player ever. He immediately seizes his chance, goes for the move queen e6. Of course, Magnus Carlsen, never afraid of an ending, but this is also pretty much the best and only move. The main point is that after knight to d5, now black can get away with the move queen takes e4 which would not have happened had the white queen been on b1, by the way, covering this. This leads to some crazy tactics, but here 
Black is fine after knight e5, he does have bishop takes d1, attacking the queen with tempo, picking up an exchange, and he's gonna be alright. So Van Vele once again took time after queen e6, but could not find anything better than to exchange queens, which still looks fine, had black recaptured with a bishop here, which looks pretty natural. White is still a little bit better, he plays b3 to take all these squares, and then he can think about knight d5, knight b5 once again, it's nothing to be afraid of. Still. Nothing to write home about either, and the problem is that black has a much stronger move here, the move f takes e6. Might look strange because he's ruining his pawn structure, but chess is a concrete game, and f takes e6 just threatens to win material very concretely. Bishop takes f3, followed by e5, and this rook would eat something on the f-file. It's not that easy to parry that threat, because there is also this pin, meaning this knight can't just move away. So black, white only has one move to avoid this, which is the move e5, stopping black from going there. But e5 is a move you don't really want to play. This pawn can turn out to be quite weak, and it also weakens the d5 square, which Carlsen immediately occupies by going knight to d5. Not the only move here, you could also make a case for a move like rook c8, knight c4, there were many options, but knight d5 clarifies the situation and it is a pretty good move. Knight takes d5, it's pretty much forced, this bishop was under attack, e takes d. First problem for white is he can't take on d5 with the rook now, even if he wanted to, I'm sure he wanted to, because once again he drops material on the f-file, bishop f3, bishop f3, and now it's the g-pawn that does the job, not the e-pawn, g5, and one of these bishops is gonna fall. So instead the move you probably think of first is to play the move h3, <clears throat> to get rid of the pin. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, let's say e6, and king g2, rook a e8, and only black can be better here. Not the end of the world, but e5 is a weakness, while the white bishop pair, as much as I like it, is not really having an impact. So, nothing to look forward to either if you're white, but Van Veli did manage to find a good solution instead. So let's switch over to the players, use my new favorite function. Here we got Luke Van Veli <laughs> contemplating his options. Let's see what he comes up with. Doesn't look that happy, Carlsen very focused, and Van Veli goes for the move knight to g5 which is an excellent <coughs> choice given the circumstances and clearly manages to muddy the water a little, little bit. After, let's go back to it, after knight g5, all of a sudden it's not so easy for black to react. He wants to take on d1, but then bishop takes d5, intermediate check, king h8, rook takes d1, and it turns out that white has full compensation for the exchange. Knight e6 is in the air, but more importantly, there is always knight takes knight to f7. If black goes for the natural, bishop takes e5. White could already go knight f7, winning back the exchange, which should lead to a draw. So after knight g5, bishop d1 is not all that tempting. Instead, Carlsen, I believe, comes up with a better move. He plays e6. <clears throat> after e6, not that easy for white to do anything but f3, so he does play that. And the question is how black wants to react, because bishop f5 might look natural, staying in touch with his pawn, but now white goes g4. And all of a sudden, black is in trouble. He would have to go bishop g4, fg, rook takes f4, rook, knight takes e6, rook takes g4. It's a long computer line, of course, just goes to show that you don't want to play like this, rook takes d5, with a serious advantage for white. So instead, after f3, you have to counterattack. You have to go h6, and this is what Carlsen does, not removing his bishop. f takes g4, h takes g5, bishop takes g5. This is my favorite position of the whole game, because there is eight pieces on the g-file, something we do not see every day. Bishop takes g5, 
Knight takes e5. Bishop to f4 this is another good move. Knight takes g4 is not really dangerous because white goes bishop h3 and he wins his pawn back. The knight can't move and after e5 well, there's a couple options. Bishop g5 is probably most accurate when this pawn will be won back no matter what. So Carlson decided not to take and said went knight to c6 and this is the position where it really all goes wrong for Luke Van Veli. One big reason probably is that he was in time trouble. He burned too much time in the opening and out of the opening. I believe he was already down to around five minutes here. Probably made a move quickly. But I can't really come up with an explanation for what happened to him. Just shouldn't happen. Knight c6 attacked the b2 pawn. Why should have defended the, d the b2 pawn by playing b3? or rook to c2, or rook to d2, or even the more sophisticated bishop e3, bishop b2, rook b1, winning back this pawn on b7, because now there's no bishop d4 check. But when Veli did none of the above, played g5, and of course Carlsen just grabbed the pawn. And after bishop takes b2, rook c2, the problem is rook b1, there is bishop d4, intermediate check, king somewhere, bishop to b6. Also leads to a clear black extra pawn. You can't do that. Same story after rook c2 though. Very unclear to me what Luke Van Veli missed here. You can't give the world champion an extra pawn in the ending and hope to get away with it. This is what happened. The rest, I think it's almost a matter of technique. Not only is black a pawn up, white is also very low on time and we are in Carlsen's favorite domain which is good endgame. Bishop d4 check, king h8, rook a d8, very nice little move. Defending the d5 pawn so he can follow up with e5 and using some small tactics, which is always a mark of great endgame play to get his pieces where he wants them. Rook takes c6 might look strong, b takes c, rook takes d4, but here black has to move e5, fork, so you have to go bishop e5, and now rook d to e8, and the bishop can't move because there would be a big, big check on e1, hence it will be lost. Nice little tactic. So white can't go for that. Instead he had to keep playing rook b1, rook f7, but it's just a clear extra pawn and two pass pawns in the center. That will set in motion one day. Task is pretty hopeless. Bishop h3, rook e8. <clears throat> Rook did its job on d8 and goes to e8, rook to e2, now e5 comes. And sooner or later these two guys would get the job done. Fanveli plays the best move under the circumstances, rook b5 attacks here, there is still a pin. But of course Carlsen unpins immediately, rook f8, bishop to e6, this is desperation. He's, well he was so low on time and he had to do something. And bishop d2 also did not really inspire a lot of confidence. Rook to f2, rook takes, rook takes. It's pretty much hopeless. <clears throat> Instead, bishop e6 was Van Veli's last ditch effort, but it does just change two bishops against the rook, which is not enough to hold the game. E takes f4, rook takes b7. This was his idea to exploit this pin. But black also gains something and he puts it to work immediately. It passed f pawn, which is very nasty. f3, rook d2. Now Carlson takes one tempo to unpin, goes king g7, forcing white to take here, which he does. This endgame is just gone. This pawn, supported by the two minor pieces, will cost the rook, or at least yield another exchange, which will finish the game. And that's pretty much what happens. Rook d3, f2, king g2, king e6, h4, bishop b6. No hurry. Now the knight is ready to come. Rook f3, knight e5, one check, king e7. It's just nothing white can do. There's too many routes that will lead to victory for black. a4, bishop goes back to d4. He doesn't even want to be bothered with any potential a5s. g4, hoping for a last little trick after if black takes on g4 to play rook f4 with a double attack against the two black pieces and should black give a check on e3 at the very least you take on f2 and 
win the main enemy. However, this is exactly what happened and Carlsen played a very cute finishing move in this position, which I'm sure gave him great pleasure. It's a very nice touch and I'm sure a lot of the viewers saw it by now. It's the move knight to h2. Threatening f1 queen and if white takes it, king takes h2, there is the small detail that bishop e5 pins the rook and wins the game immediately. So Carlsen manages to bounce back. Van Vili resigned after knight h2. Carlsen back on 50%, has two out of four. Two main factors that led to this victory, apart from Carlsen being a great player, of course. One is Van Vili did not defend his b2 pawn, which is hard to explain, really. Why wouldn't he do that? The second is that Van Vili blew too much time in the opening, so he had to rush here, making it an uphill battle. The opening once again did not go well for Magnus Carlsen. However, after four rounds, he's back to 50%. There is still nine rounds to go, which is plenty of time to enter the race for first place. Tomorrow is a rest day in Vikingsee. We'll see how he proceeds in game number five. Thanks everybody for watching and see you soon. Bye.